Medieval goldsmiths were, were one of the most important of craftsmen because they worked in precious metals, they worked in gold and silver. Always the object of the goldsmith was to make uh, as impressive an object for the church as he could. The techniques that the goldsmiths used, they, they were quite varied. Engraving metal to produce patterns, uh, often floral patterns. There was obviously hammering metal, hammering metal from behind, which is called repousse. Repousse is a French word that means to push from the back. I've chosen to use an ancient technique in my modern designs because I love the timelessness of repousse. I love the evidence of tool marks, the hand of the maker, and the intimate um, creation process. One of the objects that uh, fascinated me in the exhibition was the reliquary casket of Saint Adrian and Natalia, not only because it's an exquisite example of medieval repoussé, but it's a captivating story as well, where Natalia's husband is martyred, and she's so proud of his martyrdom that she carries his severed hand with her back to sea and takes it in her bed. So I thought I would replicate the techniques that the medieval craftsmen used, and make the hand, the severed hand of Adrian. So this is an enlargement of Saint Adrian being martyred. I'm going to do a low relief of Saint Adrian's hand here to show you the techniques that the medieval craftsman might have used to create this beautiful object. I would start with a sheet of fine silver and cut the size piece that I need off the silver. And then I would transfer the design and then I will scribe the outline with a fine steel scribing tool so I can see where I'm going when I move over to the chasing station. There's this fascinating development of reliquaries as shaped like the parts of the body that uh, the bone ca came from. We've seen the parts of feet, arms, heads or fingers, presumably to enhance its value and its authority uh, as a relic. Great. So now, chasing is finished. It's time to put it in the pitch pot for the repoussé. So now, I don't need to heat the metal because it's already been annealed, but what I do need to do is heat the pitch. Pitch is basically pine resin, tallow, brick dust, and other materials melted into this uh, compound that when it's heated, it becomes sticky as tar. And when it's cold, it's hard as wood. The idea of pitch is that it gives you a resistant surface to do the repoussé work into without hammering the metal flat like a steel block would. So that's why I've inverted the piece in the pitch. I'm going to work from the reverse of it, the negative. I'm going to push the relief down into the pitch and hope that from experience that it's going to look something like the finished relief that I'm, that's my objective. This is a fantastic reliquary of St. Anastasius. The structure is of silver, but it's decorated partly with gilding and partly with niello. Niello is a silver sulphide that hardens and looks rather like a sort of black, black enamel. The doors would actually open so that the faithful could actually see the relic inside. And each of them is decorated each door is decorated with crosses and little, exquisite little knobs that could, the priest could open. The architecture is composed of openings, repoussé arches, uh, doors and the little chapels at e each end. Repoussé is a wonderful way of working metal because you can create a relief scene from one continuous piece of metal and the materials used to work with, as you've seen, are very basic and accessible and essentially unchanged since the ancient Egyptians. So it's a technique that is used a lot in the Middle Ages all through history. And I like to think that uh, I carry on a little bit of that heritage in the work that I do. Mm -hmm.